Good morning. So you, you will notice some changes beginning next week. Uh, next week we're going to begin passing the offering basket, the basket for uh, collection, and we're going to use the, the center aisles between the, the uh, sections, and uh, that way we'll use two people that will start the baskets going. And your responsibility is to keep the basket going, okay? That's your responsibility. And to fill it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And to fill it, too. <laughs> lots of money. Yeah, lots of money. Uh, so that's beginning next week. Also, <clears throat> we've received permission from the Archdiocese to restore the chalice, to bring the chalice back. So we're past any sort of sense of a flu season, and so, uh, and we move forward in, uh, in COVID uh, pandemic experience, no longer an emergency. So <clears throat> if you are sick, then you should not come to the chalice. Right? But uh, know that the wiping of the chalice and, and uh, the, the alcohol content that's in the wine will uh, prevent most everything from being transmitted. Uh, the uh, you know, years ago, they did a study of parishes that had the chalice and parishes that did not have the chalice, and they had the same level of sickness in the parish. So, so there's no, not really an increased risk. Uh, and to know that if you uh, receive with just the body of Christ, you're receiving both the body and blood. If you receive only from the chalice, sometimes celiac people will only receive from the chalice, you're receiving both the body and the blood. The fullness of, of uh, the body and blood is in each of the elements, each of the species. Uh, our Eucharistic ministers are going to uh, have some more training, and uh, uh, we know that, that we are moving forward on bringing back the chalice because to eat and to drink is a fuller sign of the kingdom meal, the kingdom banquet. This week we had uh, uh, four funerals, Mariana Romita, David Brewer, uh, Deacon Robert McNeil, and baby Amelia. And uh, we had three interments, uh, Ernest Ashley, Joe Donnelly, and Rosemary Sasso. So we keep all of these people and their families in our prayers as we come to the Eucharist today, we had one uh, marriage, Joshua Coughling and Natalie McCormick. So Joshua is originally from Florida. Florida, He has relatives and family from Arizona. So at the rehearsal on Friday, I said, we've been keeping it hot up here to make all of you feel comfortable. <laughs> but I'm glad that the heat is broken. So we keep uh, Joshua and Natalie in our prayers as they begin their married life together. Uh, we had a wonderful youth ministry finale on uh, Friday evening. Uh, over 100 people with our youth leaders and our uh, youth in the parish hall on Friday evening. And uh, we had theology on tap at... Uh, the Flying Monkey on uh, Friday evening, and Father Eric Moss spoke about uh, the theology of rest. I think I should watch that video again, you know, <laughs> theology of rest. And our Catholic Women's League, not just from our parish, but from the entire northern region, had a retreat yesterday at Martyr Shrine, and that was very successful. Today is the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. Uh, Father Niamal is our presider and our homilist. We have Deacon Robert, the one who's alive, here with us, uh, uh, Father Ro Deacon Robert Southers. I invite you to stand to open your uh, hymnals to number 422, 422 for our gathering song. Our opening hymn is number 590, 
on this day, the first of days, number 590. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, in a moment of silence, let us accept our unworthiness before the Lord in order to offer the supreme sacrifice of our Lord. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the, the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses wrote, rose early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name, the Lord. The Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. And Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. He said, if now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, I pray, let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints will greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The one who believes in him is not condemned, but the one who does not believe is condemned already for not having believed. Believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. A young man went up on a mountain to meet a guru in India. Guru means a teacher who is full of wisdom and is able to give right advice and guidance. And they live in mountainous area. So Guru said to the boy, how can I help you? Then the boy said, I want you, you to explain, for, explain God for me. Then Guru smiled and said, A God that can be explained is not a God that you should worship. I repeat, a God that can be explained is not a God that you should worship. Today the Mother Church celebrates the solemnity of the most holy trinity, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. From the rising of the sun to its setting throughout the day, we bless ourselves in the name of the Lord, Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we bless our children, our loved ones. And we say the other prayer, glory be to the Father, Son, and to the Holy Spirit. So Trinity, this God is not a part of our life. This is our life. 
the first person in the Holy Trinity gave us life. Life generates from him. And second person, Jesus Christ, he redeemed us. And the Holy Spirit keeps purifying us and the world. My grandfather used to say, God the Father created the world, Son redeemed the world, and the Holy Spirit keeps purifying us, the world. When we read the Holy Scriptures, the Holy Bible, it's so clear for us to understand. Of course, this is a mystery. This is a mystery. As human beings, it's so difficult for us to fathom. If we understand, you may be another God. But God has given us enough strength and faith for us to believe. So many mysteries. Our whole life is a mystery. Sometimes I think from my childhood up to now, my journey 42 years, is a real mystery for me. I can't explain in mere words. And my whole faith in God is a mystery. My relationship between God and myself is a mystery. Sometimes I think my parents, my father is Theodulus, mother is Beatrice. Why they became my parents? Why not others, some other couple? I have only bro one brother, younger to me. Why he became the youngest and one brother for me? You may have your spouses next to you. Look at them and see how come she became my wife out of billions and millions of women in this world and my husband. These are mysteries, but do we question or doubt? No. We simply live this mystery. In the Holy Eucharist, this Mass, so many mysteries. In the beginning, I said, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. When the candles are lit on the altar, it means Jesus is present on this altar. Do we question? Where is Jesus and things? No. We simply believe. In relation to our religion, our God, and all the promises Jesus places before us, we can't understand. Yes, we don't want to understand too. But still, our faith is more than enough for us to believe. Mystery is not to doubt, but to live our daily endeavors. I go back to the Trinity. So in the scriptures, in the Bible, we see first person, God the Father. From creation of the world up to Jesus, the Messiah, he was playing the prominent role in the Holy Trinity. God created the whole universe and our first parents, Adam and Eve. And in the first reading we see, he spoke to Moses and his people, Israel, Israelites, and other patriarchs, prophets. Up to Jesus, he was playing the prominent role. When you read the Bible, you see. It doesn't mean that Jesus and the Holy Spirit were not there. In the Genesis, we see the scripture writer says, the Spirit of the Lord was moving upon the face of the earth. And in the Gospel of St. John says, the word, it means Jesus, was there even before God created the world. He was with God. They were there. But first person, God the Father, played the prominent role. 
So with the coming of the second person, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, he redeemed us by suffering on the cross and rising on the third day by defeating death in order to redeem us. He redeemed us, brought us salvation. It's up to you to respond to that salvation and receive in return. So last Sunday we celebrated Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said before his ascension to his disciples, I must go. Don't be worried, I must go. I am going because the counselor, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and he will purify you. He will strengthen you, empower you. From Pentecost up to the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, one day he will come for sure. Maybe in our lifetime or after this period of time, Holy Spirit is playing the prominent role. He keeps purifying us for us to achieve salvation. So dear brothers and sisters, we have been believing in this mystery, even though we don't understand. All the promises Jesus placed before us, his teachings and teachings of the church, we don't doubt or argue, simply we believe and we accept we try our level best in spite of our unworthiness to follow them. So let us continue to not to doubt or to argue, but to believe in this mystery and to live in our daily endeavors. Let us praise this triune God by saying glory all together. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. To the true God, who is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness, let us pray for the mission of the church, the needs of our world, and the salvation of all people. For the church, Diverse in gifts and united in the love and praise of God's holy name, and for all Christians who proclaim the love of the Trinity to the nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, justice, and tranquility where there is violence, unrest, and injustice. And for the people of Ukraine, Sudan, and the Holy Land, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for an atmosphere of faith and love that molds hearts and minds of all young people in the ways of justice and peace, for the gift of work that provides dignity and the necessities of life to all people and for those who are, unem those who are unemployed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all hospital workers, for those awaiting medical treatment, for first responders and all who are displaced because of forest fires, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for families, reflections of the life-giving Trinity, in the love that binds them together, and for parents, guardians, and grandparents who shape the lives of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, for all who suffer from poor mental health, for those who are sick, including Elizabeth Hughes, Angela Marchand, and all those on our parish sick list, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, including Deacon Robert McNeil, Ernest Ashley, infant Amelia Grace Taylor, Bob McGregor, Peter Grassman, and for the victims of the India train accident, and for all who are mourning, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, graciously hear our prayer and strengthen our hope, faith in your Son, that we may be his witnesses and live in the communion of your Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For with the only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person. They are unity in substance, and they are equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherub, cherubim too, and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Yeah. 
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Francis our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us praise our Heavenly Father with the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Peace, peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
I asked the Minister of Communion to the homebound to come forward. As you go to the sick and the homebound, take with you not only the sacrament we have celebrated, but also the word of God which we have heard, as well as the affection of this parish community. Ask for the prayers of those whom you visit in return. Go now with God's peace and blessing. Let us pray. May receive in this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. This week we have a vaccine clinic on Monday from 9 to 3 in the parish hall. And you can be up to date with your vaccines. Uh, and we have our a meeting for Extraordinary Ministers of Holy Communion on Monday evening at 7 o'clock. Uh, Tuesday, we have Christian Meditation, 10.30 online, and the link is on the website. And Thursday afternoon, we have the Alumni Writing Group at 2 o'clock. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.